Good day, dear viewers. My name is Luke Tessier, and this is A Form of Sound Words. We continue this week with our series on biblical misconceptions, that is, ideas and concepts that the general public believes is biblical, but in fact is largely or completely unbiblical. And this week, we'll consider the popular statement, Judge not, lest ye be judged. Now this is an interesting one. Interesting in that the statement is actually 100% biblical. It's a nearly perfect citation of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. Judge not, that ye be not judged. So, if it's biblical, how can the statement, judge not lest ye be judged, possibly fit in a series called Biblical Misconceptions? The answer, of course, is surprisingly easy. Citing scripture without a firm understanding of the immediate context of the passage, as well as the global scriptural context of the Bible, can deceive people into all sorts of error. There is a play on Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 that is well known amongst Christians. I can do all things through a verse taken out of context. I remind you all, dear viewers, that when Satan tempted the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4, Mark 1, and Luke chapter 4, three times the devil quoted the scriptures to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in all three times, we had a perversion of the true intent of scripture. The common use of judge not lest ye be judged is no different. Taken in its proper context, it is a valuable teaching. When taken out of context, it quickly becomes a foolish, deceitful, and destructive idea. So, how should we understand, judge not, lest ye be judged? What does the Bible actually teach in Matthew chapter 7? Well, let's keep reading past verse 1 and figure out the overall teaching. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. You see that? One doesn't need to do a deep dive into the original Greek language to figure out that Matthew chapter 7's focus isn't the condemnation of the act of judgment, but rather the act of hypocritical judgment, the practice of judging another's little peccadilloes while giving your own overt depravity a pass. 
the beam compared to the moat. This teaching isn't only found in Matthew chapter 7. It can be found in Romans chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. There we read, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? The Bible undoubtedly warns saints against being quick to harsh judgment, especially towards other saints. Romans chapter 14, verses 10 to 12 says, But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5 says, Therefore, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. The reason for these warnings is obvious. We're all fallen sinners. When a sinner judges another sinner, for his or her sin, it can quickly slip into hypocrisy. Also, as stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5, only the Lord can truly see the hearts of men and can bring to light the hidden things of darkness. All too often, we don't see the whole picture. Our judgments, therefore, can be unfair and rooted in prejudice. All that said, using judge not lest ye be judged as a blanket statement, a prohibition of sorts against all judgment, most certainly isn't biblical. Note just a few verses down from the first five verses of Matthew chapter 7 that we cited earlier. Verse 15 to 20 specifically. There we read, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So, we're encouraged in Scripture to judge the fruit that is the actions of men, to determine whether these men are faithful or unfaithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15 tells us, 
But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man, or is judged rightly of no man. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try or test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And John chapter 7 and verse 24, the Lord Jesus Christ says, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So, the Christian is to judge. He is to judge righteous judgment, that is, judgment that is according to the scriptures, remembering always to exercise judgment in humility. We're all sinners. And without hypocrisy, that is, not acting as if we are holier than the other. Dear viewers, the Lord help us to not fall on one side or the other from righteous judgment. May we not become Pharisees who hypocritically judge others to make ourselves feel superior. And may we not fall into the error of foregoing all judgment, opening the door to sin and to deceit. And with that, dear viewers, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you.